Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. A bit breezy today and looking at the weather forecast we're going to have a couple of days of rain, snow, an east wind. Not very nice so I'm trying to get one or two jobs done outside today and then we'll go up to the greenhouse and set the tomatoes and sweet peppers. First job I'm going to do, as you know we've done all the tests and now we know what nutrients to put on and I'm starting by putting some on nitrogen on the rhubarb. Now rhubarb, believe it or not, is one of the highest feeders of nitrogen in the garden so it needs quite a lot but I'm only going to give it We've only got really two roots here, but I'm only going to give it the equivalent of one square metre, although it is a little bit bigger, but it will do one square metre. I'm going to put half this side and half that side. It'll be dry blood and hoof and horn, which have got good nitrogen content. Now it is a little bit windier than what I'd like today, so I'm going to keep the bottle very low and sprinkle it on then rake, rake it round. Now the measurement is in there, a little bit in the middle and then the other one here. This is a little bit heavier so it's not blowing about so much. We'll put a bit there a bit now and that half for the other side. I'll just rake this in now. There is horse manure already on it but that hasn't got the nitrogen content that the rhubarb will require so. now don't fork it in whatever you do you'll damage the roots because they're not very deep and also keep everything away from those crowns just break that up a little so let's go and do the other side Right, here we go, and keep it very, very low because of the wind. Same again. Oh, wind there. There you go. Over the weekend, we have lots of rain and wind and snow coming in, so it'll wash in nicely. Now, I know some people like to force their rhubarb, so at this stage, if you put an old dustbin or a, any sort of container over it to exclude the light, put a lid on, and then you'll get rhubarb early. Now, if you do put a dustbin or something on, put some barley straw in as well, so it keeps it nice and warm. And if you do force it, they say it's a lot sweeter now we don't cover ours up, we let it come up naturally and then we take it when it's ready, okay. Somebody's asked me how the leaf mold's getting on. Now I have another bag to tip in there, so we'll have a look at it while we tip this other bag in, okay. Well here's the leaf bin, it's lined with food safe plastic liners. So that'll keep them nice for a few, they'll last a few years, they will. Now we've had rain continuous for oh, 48 hours, so I assume this is going to be pretty wet when I move it about. We do keep it covered a bit, but as you can see it's very, very wet. I'll just mess the top of that so you can see how it's done. There is a little bit of steam coming off it. It is working, but as I say, it's quite wet. Yes, it's quite warm down there. I haven't brought the thermometer down, I do apologise, I forgot. But that's coming on nicely, so we'll just tip this other one in, and then we'll put the bags back on top, stop them blowing away. This bag was from the last lot of wind we had. They all blew down, down the garden, so I thought I'd 
get them and put them in. Right, I'll just level it off a little bit and then we'll put the covers back on. They've always got that nice decomposting smell of leaves. It's it's quite pleasant actually that is. Always smells the same. Now that's the progress of the leaf box. I should put the covers back on and it'll be another year yet before we're turning up with that lovely black compost and tomatoes actually love that. Now that's the leaf bin sorted for another little while there might be some more leaves yet you don't know with this wind now i have yesterday been working on the raised beds a little in between showers so we'll go and we'll show you how we're progressing with the two raised beds now on the way up the garden with somebody's asked me how do we put the wires onto our frames now I have taken the cover off the overwintered onions just in time for the weekend snow but we'll see how they get on with it it should be all right I think. so I'll just show you how I put the wires on these are actually string on here that I put on for winter now this is cord what we put on for the winter to stop the the mesh from getting holes in what I have I drill a hole through the frame and I put the string over the top through and then on again and that keeps the frame from wobbling about the top is the same in this case I used a bit of plastic coated wire but you can see why we did it stop the rubbing the bottom is the same as well and then the two ends just have a hole and then they're tied off so that's what it looks like with the two ends having the props in and the wire or the string in this case twisted through and over it keeps it very rigid now I've thought about the arches and I'm going to start putting them on where we're going to put the brassicas and I think this year especially for the Brussels I'm going to lift the arches up a good 9-12 inches just to give the Brussels a bit more height inside the rest will be just the same I think let's have a look at these raised beds it's getting colder now I was very busy yesterday between the rain showers it's actually quite nice now the sun's come out we're warming up a little bit now i've topped up the raised beds right as you can see i've topped up the raised beds with exactly the same mixture as what we put into the potato boxes i used the loam from the loam box put it through the screen and then i added 50 percent of used compost and mix that in with them and then i've mixed the whole of the raised bed together so it hasn't got a top and a bottom so we finished up with a raised bed with all refreshed soil in them now the spent compost i used will just open it up a bit and keep it a bit lighter i haven't put any sand or grit in this year now fertilizer wise because it's just going to be for root crops i should just put some fish blood and bone on good scattering of the volcanic rock dust just give it the minerals they do need a little bit of nitrogen but there is a little bit of nitrogen in the blood fish and bone so that should suffice this next crop this will be the last season in the raised beds here then next season we move the raised beds to a new site and all this soil and compost that we've used will all be dug into these beds here and then we'll start again i will just go up to the shed and we'll set some peppers and some tomatoes now we're in the shed out to the wind a little bit the wind is just getting up now yesterday i lifted the last of the parsnips that was in that raised bed there's various sizes as you'll see and there was one or two still hit a stone and got 
split roots, but it doesn't matter, we'll use them all. These will probably go uh, mainly for freezing now, and a few will go for our weekending as I know. Here you are then, we've got giant parsnips and small parsnips, some as you can see some didn't make it they just hit something hard and that was it now as parsnips go i would prefer those to these great big ones although dying use these for soups etc but that shows that the raised bed works i would never ever be able to produce parsnips of this quality so doing them in the raised bed and the little bit of expense and a lot of work to put them in was well worth it uh, we've had some really good parsnips out of that one now the granddaughters have even said they like parsnips this year they said they're very very sweet so i'm very pleased with the parsnip crop i like them anyway and diane likes them don't they? to have the grandchildren liking them we're not doing bad are we now today I'm going to set the tomatoes for the rootstocks and I'm going to pop a few um, money maker in as well just to say I've got some started. Now today we're going to plant the tomatoes, we're going to plant the rootstocks and I'm also going to put some money maker in. We're going to use the plug plant trainer that was sent to us from gardening naturally just to tell you that their catalogue is free loads and loads of stuff in it everything you'll want especially now we're coming up to where we're going to be setting the beans and peas if you want some frames this is the place to be now we're not being paid to do it I'm doing it because I like the stuff they supply and everything I trial they are kindly gifted them to me. So. so there you are. It's well worth having a look at that catalogue. If you want the discount code, it's Castle 10, and then you'll get your 10% discount on your first order. Do have a look. This is what I'm going to use. It's the plug trainer. I explained it before when I first got it, and I'll just take you through what I've done. Now I've used seed and cutting compost and put a bit of vermiculite in it just to open it up and then screened the lumps out because there's quite a few lumps in it and filled it up. I've pre-soaked it because it has a tray at the bottom where you pour your water in and that's come up nicely as you can see it's darkened all the compost off. So now we need to put the seed in. I'm going to start off the rootstock seeds. You need to put them in a week or 10 days before you put the scions in that you're going to graft to them. But I'm also going to put some money maker in just to start some off anyway. So I've got some tomatoes coming through should the grafting ones not take and then we've got the money makers on the way now these are the rootstock tomatoes now we'll have to label them up and keep them well away from the money maker ones because these are not for eating they are only for rootstocks the fruits are not really edible with it being a lot of cells in this tray I'm going to drop one in each one normally I drop two but we'll do one two come along three they're there somewhere there it comes four Five. I think we're going to get six so we've got a bonus in six I'll do them all and then I'll come back to you when we're labelling up 
I did find it easier with the top having these spikes in so when I pressed it in the top it left some good indentations and that was quite easy to drop those seeds into those little holes. I just cover them up a little now just a, a smidge. Now when I put the water in the bottom to soak this compost I made sure it was tepid water. I didn't go to the water butt round the back and just fill it up. I actually brought it down from the house which was quite warm and when I finished I'll spray over again with some more tepid water. So this way I know they're all snug down now. So that's it. Now because they are for root stocks only I'm going to drop a couple more labels in. I'm just sowing the rest of the money maker now. I'm only dropping one to a cell because there's a lot of cells in this tree. That's it. Right so I've done three rows so I just covered them up but I will put the label in first for you and then what we'll do we'll put labels in those two as well I just cover this row and then we'll get the labels in and show you the finished just push it over the top so they're not too deep they'll soon germinate right, we'll just pop those in And then it's a case of dropping the lid on and putting it in the propagator. I will put it into my propagator with the lid on and I'll turn the propagator to 20 degrees minimum and they'll be up in a few days. Okay, so that's that done. Now the next set is what Stewart centers very kindly sent us some sweet pepper seed for us to try. They sent this one Jimmy Nardello. We got this one Big Jim. Another one over here Orange Sun and Marconi Golden. We would set these in the 20 cell trays hopefully two to a cell and one line for each variety. I'm just going to make two little holes in each one. That's those peppers that Sue sent in and I've just put a row of King of the North at this end as well to fill the tray. Now I have pre-watered the compost before we set them as you can see it's nice and dark. Now I'm just going to spray the tops and spray the top of the tomatoes and they'll go up and into the propagator at minimum 20. It just settles things down a bit into the top of the compost. Plenty wet from below. I'll do this one as well. I'll turn it that way on so we can do it. It is tepid water, it's not cold water. There you are, look. And then we'll water this one as it needs be from the bottom from now on because it's got this nice reservoir in it. So that's those nicely done. Lid them up. I'll take one tray. Diane will take the other tray and we're going to put these straight in the propagator now so they can get warmed up nicely and get germinating. So we'll come back next week and hopefully be able to show you some plants. So at the moment we're going to take these to the prop and go for a cup of tea. Hello there, Friday today, we're in the greenhouse. Now according to the forecast we have a cold, snowy, very frosty spell of weather coming across us. So 
I'm in the greenhouse just looking how I'm going to protect the plants that we've got in here. Now there's no heat, so I've, what I've decided to do, I'm going to put fleeces on. I've brought all the fleeces up and sorted them all out this morning. These are the fleeces that uh, we got from Garden Naturally, so they'll come in very, very useful now to cover these crops. As you know, we set some of the cabbages, etc., to get an early batch going to get out of the way. Now these are germinating, so I can't move them out of the greenhouse. If you move them out of here, they'll just stretch. The geraniums have just started growing nicely, and we've got some cold weather coming. Now I will cover those as well. I put three layers of this corrugated food grade plastic sheets under the propagator so it just stops losing a bit of the heat underneath the, there's like an air gap in there so that's that will save some of the heat being lost that way <laughs> i'll be putting three layers of fleece on these plants and seedlings in here i'm going to use three because if the temperature does dip down low at least i'll be covered Apart from the actual weather arriving, it's a very dull day and we've had some rain this morning, so we'll see what arrives. Now, I've held off planting the broad beans out in the garden, the carrots, the parsnips in the raised bed until this cold spell has just passed over. I don't think it'll last very long. So we'll do those next week. Also next week we're going to go to Gemma's so she can show you a arrangement you can make for Easter for the house. We we'll look forward to seeing Gemma again. Now that'll be it for this week. Many many thanks for subscribing. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.